As a full stack developer, I make use of Laravel Valet to host websites on my local computer. Now, most of these are always Laravel websites because I'm Laravel in the back end and Vue.js in the front end. But for now, let's just take a look at the Laravel documentation because Laravel Valet is not limited to only hosting uh, Laravel websites. You can actually see in the documentation here that out of the box, Valet actually supports Laravel, uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal. So there's a bunch of other frameworks here that Laravel Valet can support uh, right out of the box. Now let's jump into the Laravel installation process and I've got the documentation open here. So let's run through this together. So if we take a look at the first section over here, uh, the introduction, you can see that Laravel Valet is actually gonna install Nginx to run uh, in the background on our computer. And then we're also gonna set up a DNS mask to set up a .test domain for every single Valet project that we set up. And of course, yeah, Laravel Valet supports all of these technologies. Now let's uh, scroll past that. And uh, I'm not really going to worry about Valet or Homestead for this video, but uh, basically this is just telling you the difference between Valet and Homestead. Now let's take a look at the installation process. And the first step of this installation process is to actually install or update Homebrew. So I actually just installed Homebrew, but let's go back over to the terminal and type brew update just to make sure that we are up to date. And yeah, that looks good. Now let's take a look at the next command here, which is a brew install PHP. And this will install the latest version of PHP to our computer. In this case, it should start installing PHP 7.3. Okay, so that PHP installation process was quite a long one. Um, I think that ran for about 10 minutes, but I can see now that PHP 7.3 has actually been installed on my computer. And I can even confirm that by typing PHP dash dash version. And uh, yeah, uh, it looks like we've got some PHP on our computer. In fact, that says 7.1.2.3. Hmm, interesting. Let's go PHP or let's go brew install PHP again and see what happens. If that doesn't update, maybe. All right, okay, so there we've got a 7.3 as the number. It's just interesting that it said 7.1 there. Anyway, now we can continue with the next step of the process, which is to install Composer. So I'm gonna right click on this and open this up in a new tab. But uh, if you guys don't know what Composer is, this is a dependency manager for PHP. Uh, so it just installs other stuff that your PHP app or program might need. Uh, now you can download and install this uh, with the GUI, but I mean, what's the point? We've just installed Brew on our computer. So let's take a look at installing Composer from the command line. So I'm gonna type Brew, uh, whoops, <laughs> install. I hit all the wrong keys there. Brew install Composer, and this should uh, download and install Composer to our computer. And this is also gonna run for about two to three minutes. So I'll be back when that's done. Uh, whoops, looks like I was wrong. That was done in eight seconds. Anyway, now let's take a look at the next step, which is to install Valet with Composer. So now that we've got Composer on our computer, we can actually start installing Composer uh, uh, packages with Composer. And the first one is uh, Laravel Valet. So let's just copy this command and paste that into my terminal. And this is actually gonna run for about a minute or two as well. Uh, because it's got to download a bunch of Symfony packages. So I'll be back when that's done. Once that's done, you need to go back over the documentation. And the next step here is to make sure that the Composer vendor bin is in your system's path, and then you can run Valet install. Now, if this isn't in your system path, then the Valet command uh, is probably not gonna work. So let's type Valet install, and I can already see that that's not gonna work, but here we can see ZSH command, uh, valet not found. So uh, you can export this into ZSH just once, or you can export it into your terminal just once uh, by running this command. And that will uh, export this path into your terminal session, but it'll only be available for this session. So if you ever try 
run this again. For some reason, valet install, you might need to run this command again. So the best thing to actually do is to make sure that that whole export command is added to a bashrc file or a zshrc file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this command in like this. And this should echo this command into my zshrc file. And that way, uh, this should always be imported into my terminal sessions uh, from now on. And then that valet install command should always work. So let's hit enter and see what happens. So now if I type valet install, well, yeah, it doesn't look like that's working right now. So I guess uh, we're not just not reading from that file just yet. So let me run this export all by itself and valet install. And I can already see that this is gonna work for now. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a look into that. Uh, but for now, let's just hit uh, enter and I'm gonna have to put in my password, my computer's password, and that is going to uh, stop Nginx, uh, install valet, and then start Nginx again. Okay, so it looks like we've got Nginx installed and we got DNS mask installed and everything's been restarted. Uh, so now if I were to ping, um, and that's actually in the documentation here, is to ping anything.test. So let's ping foobar.test and we should see a reply coming back from 127.0.0.1. And that means that uh, uh, the, let's just stop this by the way, control C. That means that our DNS mask has been set up correctly. Now, this point might be a really good time to restart your computer just because now we've got Nginx on our computer and we've got that masking set up uh, because sometimes what happens is you will have started your computer and another application on your computer might be blocking port 80, meaning any .test domain that we set up after this could return a 404. But if you restart your computer, you're gonna make sure that Nginx is actually running on port 80. So. Uh, anyway, let's continue with the tutorial and I'll bump into that problem when I get there. So let's move on to the next step here, which is the database. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, brew install MySQL 5.7. So let's copy and paste that into the terminal. And this is going to install MySQL, which is also going to run for a couple minutes and uh, I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so now MySQL is installed on our computer and I'm not really gonna make use of this for this video, but this is just um, obviously part of the process because Laravel, WordPress, all of those frameworks that were mentioned higher up are all uh, programs or not programs, but websites that make use of MySQL databases. So we uh, obviously need to make sure that we're running MySQL on our computer. Uh, and now that we've done all of that, I guess we can scroll further down the page and yeah, uh, there is some information telling you how to make Valet use different versions of PHP, but um, I'm not really worried about that. Um, and yeah, we can scroll past all of this information now and take a look at serving sites. So the way this works with Laravel Valet is uh, you have two options. You can either park an entire directory or you can link just one directory. Uh, and the difference between this is uh, if you park an entire directory, then any subfolder within that directory is going to become a test website or a dot test website. Whereas if you just link a directory, then only the directory that you've linked is going to become a dot test website. And I think what we can do just to test this out and follow along with the documentation is I'm gonna follow this example over here. Uh, and that's also going to allow me to get the Laravel installer onto my computer because I don't have that right now. So let's uh, mkdir uh, and then let's make this directory test or sites. So let's k mkdir sites. And now if I ls, uh, I should have a directory here called sites. And if I cd into sites right now and ls, okay, this is a blank directory. But what I do wanna do is uh, valet park. So let's run that command, valet park. And I'm gonna have to just put in my uh, password over here. 
uh, and now this has been added to a valet's path. So that means any subfolder I make in here is going to become a dot test uh, domain on my computer. So we can actually test that out by creating a new folder here and uh, putting in an index.html file. We can also put in a WordPress file here if, if we like, or a WordPress folder. Um, but the example that is given to us in Laravel's documentation is of course Laravel new blog. So let me go ahead and run this command. And right now that Laravel command isn't actually gonna work because I don't have Laravel in my composer file just yet. So I actually need to composer global require Laravel installer and this uh, should install Laravel or the Laravel installer onto my computer. And this whole process is also gonna run for about three to five minutes and I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so now I should have the Laravel installer on my computer and if I type uh, Laravel new blog, this will create a new Laravel installation um, in a folder called blog. So our Laravel project is going to be called blog as well. And that's just the default Laravel, uh, like hello world uh, installation that they create. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, but of course you could actually name this whatever you want, right? And this is obviously gonna craft my Laravel application, which also takes about a minute or two to run. Okay, so it looks like that's done. And if I just jump back over to my terminal here and ls, uh, I should be able to see a new directory here called blog. So like I said, any directory with any website that's added into uh, this folder here, because this folder is parked, our sites folder, um, we should now have a domain for that. So if I type in blog.test, I should actually have a Laravel website pop up. And yeah, if I threw in a folder here with a WordPress site or even just a site, uh, a folder with an index.html page, each one of those sites should actually be served uh, under whatever folder name they are called. And I personally prefer this over things like MAMP and WAMP, uh, just because this is an environment that works for me. But if we go back over to the documentation, um, there's actually a lot more that can be done with Valet. Uh, and I haven't even spoken about linking sites yet, but uh, I think this is kind of self-explanatory. It's uh, very similar to what we just did with the park. And uh, yes, uh, you can also secure and unsecure your websites or your test websites using Laravel's, uh, Laravel Valet's commands. Um, but, now that I have introduced all of this stuff to you, uh, I think the next step is to set up a database because we've installed MySQL in this video, but I haven't actually shown you how I like to work with my databases yet. So that's gonna be done in the next video and I'll see you guys next time. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, there's a couple things that you can do to help me. First of all, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment saying something nice, hopefully. Share this video with your friends because all of that stuff is gonna help my channel grow. And I'm also feeling a little lonely, so don't forget to follow me on social media.